Uh, I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Niles Main District Library Board, our virtual regular meeting. Uh, Cindy, would you conduct a roll call? Yes. Uh, Karen Diamond. Here. Carolyn Derblick. Here. Becky Keene Adams. Here. Diane Olson. Here. Omar Kadir. Uh, let's see. Omar, uh, you have your mute on. Well, we can see he's here. We can okay. see he's here. Okay. He's um, waving. He's probably busy. Patty Rosansky. Here. And Linda Ryan. Here. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, if you would all please uh, join me for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, we can. I, I am present. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. okay. Um, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States of America and to, to the republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under, under God, God indivisible. indivisible with, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. Okay, um, thank you. I'm glad to uh, see that everyone's able to be here right now. And um, may we um, start off on our agenda here. May have a motion to approve the minutes of the virtual special board meeting of December 9th, 2009. Do I have such a motion? Motion. Second. Okay. Uh, any comments or questions regarding that motion? Who was the second? My, uh, Diane. Me. Diane. Yeah. Uh, is it only me or I have the minutes for the 16th. I don't have the minutes for that. Oh, it should have been in your packet. It's just a one page sheet. Well, maybe somehow I lost it, which is part for the course. <laughs> um, it's short, so maybe it was stuck to another piece of paper. It could be. Oh, look, it might be because I had them all shuffled around. All right. Well, um, all right. I, I'm going to ask if there's any other comments. Uh, and hearing none, Patty, I think I am going to call for a vote. Uh, you know, if you want to abstain, if you haven't uh, actually read them, that's fine. So, uh, maybe, oh, uh, I have them. Okay. Good job. Okay. It's like you said, it was stuck to another paper. Okay, good, good. Are we going to vote? Okay. Um, they're very short, so Patty, I think you can probably look them over pretty quickly. Yeah. I looked them over before, but I was like, where are they? Okay, fine. All right, right Cindy, would you give us a roll call? Okay, um, Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes, yes. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Becky? Yes. Diane? Yes. Omar. Yes. All right. May I now have a motion to approve the minutes of the virtual regular board meeting of December 16th, 2020? Uh, I move. This is Omar. Omar. Second. Second by Patty. All right. Any questions or comments regarding the minutes of December 16th? All right, hearing none, I'll call for a roll call. Omer? Uh, yes. yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Becky? Yes. Diane? Yes. <clears throat> All right. Do we have any uh, public comment? I don't believe so. Is that, is that a no? I don't believe so. Is that what you said, Susan? Yeah, I don't think so. Nobody has right. sent anything and nobody has their hand up. All there right. are not very many people. Fine. Okay. Well, then we have another very important matter to move on to. 
and that is a board resolution honoring Diane Winberg on her retirement. And um, this is uh, something that I might get choked up about because we, you know, we, we really appreciate all of our employees. We're very fond of them and we love the great work they do. But uh, Diane Winberg has a special place in her heart because she spends a lot of time with the board uh, trying to take down everything that we say. It's uh, trying to take down all the uh, votes, but it's not always been an easy job. So um, we really send our heartfelt congratulations and best luck. To you. So um, I am going to read this resolution and then ask for a motion uh, to pass this resolution. So, whereas Diane assisted three directors and went through two mo major uh, renovations, and whereas Diane's work was proficient, professional, and ethical, and whereas Diane Wer Winberg has meticulously kept our notary and voter registrar applications up to date, and whereas Diane attended and wrote minutes for more than 300 <laughs> board meetings. Oh my God. Uh. And whereas Diane accurately processed and replied to thousands of job applications, and whereas Diane brought competent continuity through change, and whereas Diane offered warm greetings, graciousness, and a great smile, and whereas Diane worked quickly with patience and a smile, giving us that vital behind the scenes support so that we could better serve our patrons, and whereas we could always depend on Diane Winberg's great smile to start our board meeting. And whereas Diane Winberg is an exemplar of the thorough and timely, and whereas Diane possesses a wry writ that is many times topped off by a canny stare over the top of her glasses. <laughs> and this just goes on and on. And whereas Diane Winberg always keeps us supplied with the indispensable post notes and other office supplies without fail. And whereas Diane succeeded in learning each new software tool as it came along. And whereas Diane Winberg graciously volunteered her time and careful attention to detail in assisting technical services with processing the thousands of new materials received all at once. And whereas we recognize Diane Winberg's gift of helping things along. She grows violets and bobbing heads. She stocks and orders things aplenty. She keeps the momentum of paperwork and payment rolling forward. She keeps oil in the cogs that turn and produce calm in the hearts of those who count on her and a smile on her face. She will be missed. Now, therefore, be it resolved, that the Board of Trustees of the Niles Main District Library, on behalf of itself, the employees, and its patrons, bestows its appreciation and commendations on Diane Winberg for her exemplary service and wishes her good health and happiness in retirement. Do I have a motion to pass this resolution? A motion. 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 Second. <laughs> We all motion, so pick whoever you want. Wait, if we can't motion, does she have to stay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, who is it? <laughs> Carolyn and Patty. No Whichever one you want. Um, Cindy, I didn't get that, so you, you just pick a couple of people, please. <laughs> or we could have multiple movements, movements too, I suppose. I don't know. Um, anyway. Uh, that is definitely on the table. Do we have any comments or questions on this resolution um, from any of those in attendance? <laughs> Thank you, Diane, for everything. We'll miss yeah. you and your fashionista. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, and we wish we could be saying this in person. Uh, yeah, but the fact that good so far. <laughs> my What's mom that? and my aunt have kept me busy. They know oh, good. I'm home. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but please uh, know that it's been a wonderful 25 years, and I, I thank the library for giving me the opportunity. I love my job. No, Dan, we love you. you. We love you too. And you'll see me. I hope I'll be so. coming in all the time. <laughs> I hope Good. so. And I and I trust Susan's going to find the right replacement for me. I think she knows what she's looking for. I'll be the same, but 
but we miss you already. Thank you, Susan. I miss you too. You you were you were great. Well, well you know okay. what? All three all three of my supervisors were great. Yeah, I thank cool. Carrie for giving me the opportunity. I thank Linda Weiss for believing me. And I and I thank Susan for just everything. She was a wonderful supervisor. Thank you. Well, Okay, I think we should. I think we should. Uh, we should add a little section, and whereby uh, Diane is instructed to enjoy her retirement to the fullest. Oh, and I yes. Yes. Me. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yesterday, right, I, I went to a volunteer the food pantry for the first time. It's so ordered. <laughs> nice. Oh, nice. it's nice. And I came home and it took me all day to warm up. I was so cold. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Yeah, they had me outside. It was so cold. <laughs> But anyway, yeah. it'll be it, retirement is fun, well, and I wish it. all of you the best. You too, Thank you. Diane. You too. Good Thank health you. to all. Thank of you, Diane. Thank, Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye. Thank you. All right. Bye, oh, we actually need a roll call here. We actually need oh, a roll call okay. for this oh, oh, to right. be official. So, I'm just gonna Cindy, start at the beginning. Uh, Karen Diamond. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Becky. Yes. Diane? Yes, with special wishes. Oh, Umar? thank you, Diane. <laughs> Umar? Yes. Okay. Patty? Definitely yes. Linda? Yes. <laughs> I want to say thank you again. We love you, Diane. We love Thank you, you too. Diane. Well, I love you. Keith loves you too. See my husband? <laughs> Take care of us. Go to your meeting now. Important stuff. Maybe I'll see you in the uh, in the home improvement store sometime soon. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> bye bye. All right. Bye. Okay, I guess uh, we should proceed with uh, trustee reports. And Diane, you're welcome to stay or not stay as long as you like. You actually have the option of leaving whatever you feel like it now. <laughs> I'm sure in the past there have been many times when you wished you could have left earlier, but uh, we kept you late. So in any event, uh, we'll move along now. So trustee reports, um, I uh, will start off. I want to report that I did uh, attend uh, next Tuesday uh, yesterday which was uh, very interesting. And I also attended a program on sharing photos online. So I'm trying to, while stuck at home, improve my tech abilities. Uh, I have one small little complaint here though, and that is uh, sharing photos online was scheduled at the exact same time as food fallacies and fake news. So I actually wanted to go to both of them, but couldn't do that. So uh, if there is some kind of uh, calendar where these can be arranged so they don't overlap, it might have something to do with this, when the speaker was available. I think. Uh, but that, uh, those were very interesting programs. So I, I appreciated those. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention, I was very pleased to open up my Niles journal and see that the headline was Niles Main District Earns Star Library Honor. So uh, I was very pleased that our district won that honor and also that it got a little recognition in the press. So that's very good. Now, um, I think that this is uh, mentioned also in your director's report, Susan, perhaps you could just tell us a little bit more about that later on when you get to your report. Okay, that's my report. Um, any of the other trustees, would you like to make any reports? Um, about any events you've attended or press you've seen or other things relating to the library. Yes. Yes, Becky. Uh, I attended an event today online with Rails that was um, a meeting for trustees and it was a discussion about, well, it wasn't really a discussion. It was more one person talking about how they do onboarding of their trustees at their library. And I think that's something maybe we should look, look at uh, working on in the future. Um, that's great. Becky, I saw that, uh, but I had a conflict, so I wasn't able to attend. It was um, recorded. Okay. Is what it, is it? 
Is it on YouTube or? Does... It will be on the Rails YouTube channel. I can get that info and send it out. Thank oh, you. That'd be great. Or, or just send it to Susan and she'll send it out to everyone. Sure. So thank you for that information. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Anyone else? Yeah, I sure. couldn't. I couldn't sign up for that for some reason. I, I couldn't get. I clicked or whatever the deal was. It just didn't work. So I assumed it would be recorded. But I'm glad Becky mentioned they did record it. Now just watch it. But thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, unless there's any other trustee reports, I'll move to our treasurer for her report, Patty. Yes, um, Greg, I just want to verify. I couldn't find my notebook that I keep all of these in, so I had to use a different one. It, this was the sixth month in December, correct? Oh, no, that's correct. We're halfway Good. through the year. I'm so proud of myself that I actually got that one correct. Okay. Uh, January is when we uh, give the report for December. Uh, which is the sixth month of the fiscal year, or which was the sixth month of the fiscal year, we were 50% of the way th through the year. Revenues, uh, property taxes were at 39%. Investments, thank you again, 93%. Total revenues were at 40%. <coughs> Expenditures, total salaries at 53%. Uh, library and materials uh, were at 50%. Library operating expense, 32%. General administration, 45%. Uh, employee French benefit, 51%. Total utilities, 43%, uh, capital expenditures, 2%. Okay, let's go. Social Security, 53%. Workers' comp, 61%. Building equipment maintenance, 23, uh, 26% rather. And total expenditures was at 39%. Then, Excuse me, I got to flip to another page here. I was looking at the checks that were, this time there were so many that were over a thousand, I decided let's just go to over 2,000. Um, automatic building is something to do with the heating and cooling, if I'm correct, isn't it, uh, Greg? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, and that's a quarterly payment or is that an annual payment? Uh, that I'd have to check on, uh, but uh, we use software to, you know, to control the heating in the building uh, so that we can uh, make sure that all the spaces are comfortable, and uh, that's what that bill is for. I think it's annual. It says on the check register that it's January through December. Oh, okay, there you so go. So there's annual, and then um, Blue Cross Blue Shield is monthly. Uh, Come. That's uh, Communico, Patty. Communi yeah, I'm trying to think. How do you pronounce it? Communico. Sure. Was, um, that's an annual fee too, isn't it? I think annual. It, yes, that's it, for that's a, it's one year for a new module of Communico. It's not our entire Communico package. We've added another module that I referred to in my director's report that is mm -hmm. for people to sign up for appointments to pick up their holds rather than always calling. Oh, okay, cool. And we'll use it for other appointment-based things too, but that's, we finally broke down and did it because it integrates with our app and with our uh, with our Polaris. So we're going to give that a try. But it, yes, that is an annual. And then Constellation Electricity, that's our monthly. Uh, GMA Cleaning, that's for the night cleaning, uh, uh, you said, right? So then... Um, Ingram, in, Ingram, in, in, Ingram, library services. That's uh, that's also related to books. And is that month? Uh, uh, that's also annual, isn't it? The amount is that for the year? 
No, that's just the uh, charges for the materials that were received during that month. Ingram is our main book vendor. So by most of our materials. It'll vary depending on what's ordered that month? Exactly. Okay. Because I don't remember seeing that amount before. That's why I questioned that one. Uh, and Klein, Thorpe, and Jenkins, if you remember correctly, last meeting, I said we hadn't received the bill for the month before. So this one is for two months worth. And... Um, $1,305 of that is for the lawsuit that was brought against us from Mr. McCula. It's still pending until tomorrow. There's supposed to be a judgment. So we will have more added to that again next month. At this point, we're at $17,522.78 for the lawsuit. Okay, then we go down to Oak Books, and that's that's quarterly, isn't it? So we pay that a month quarterly. Yeah, quarterly cost, yeah. And Overdrive uh, is for eBooks, and let's see, we, Visa is Visa, and uh, Visiograph is uh for six months isn't it no that's the newsletter oh yeah that's that right this issue of the we newsletter. get it six times so it's right. yeah i wrote it down six months instead of six times a year okay never mind <laughs> and that's it okay thank you patty uh Carol, you, know, you have a question yes um patty you mentioned the um attorney's fees Yes, ma'am. For this month, what two months of attorney's fees are those? That would be for November and December, since we didn't have them in time for last month's meeting. Okay, so, um, and, and I don't have my sheet in front of me. Is the total attorney's fees this month 1305 No, is that no, that's only for the lawsuit. Okay, the what was the total again? $2,522. Okay, you know, I wanted to bring up um, a point about these attorney's fees. I um, happen to be reviewing the bills submitted for the month of December, which were um, much higher. I think the total was $11,000. And um, there are numerous bills in here for this um, litigation about this um, trustees term limits petition and I, I'm pretty sure out of this 11,000 most of that is also for the litigation but I wanted to mention um, two things we keep calling it McCoola's lawsuit. Mr. McCoola's put the lawsuit against the library. Okay let me finish please. Go ahead. The lawsuit or the petition was a simple petition filed by residents. It was for term limits for us. In December of 2019, I was confused about how this is handled. And we had the attorney from Kleinthorpe and Jenkins come there and explain he had reviewed this petition. The petition was properly written and followed whatever the guidelines were and would be filed. No, I absolutely not. Absolutely I, not. That's no. his exact sentence. And I questioned the difference between Susan's position as the um, election officer and as someone looking for objections. He gave us the list listed under the election statutes, what Susan's responsibility is. I only brought this up because after I reviewed all of her emails to the attorneys, she was seeking questioning objections. And I didn't think that was her role. But just as a trustee, I feel if the residents want us to have term limits, I don't see why we're fighting them. I don't even see why the director would be upset with that. But we keep, now Makula's position is, she was not performing her duties. So let them hash that out. 
but I just want to make sure we're clear. I already, we already had a conversation with this same attorney and it amazes me how now he's jumping on a different position, which is what you do in law. I, I am totally aware of it. I also want to mention, I also want to mention the other expenses that I reviewed, at least on the December bill that I had. We are contacting our attorneys to review and to write BECs. It said the BEC bid, the BEC proposal. They're revising the BEC um, bid. I, that we send them our agendas, we send them our board packets. Everything we do, we send to the attorneys. I have never seen so many costs with a law firm like we have. We have qualified people, I believe, in our administration. We shouldn't need to send, we've had over 50 board meetings in the past year. They've, or 50 since Susan's been director. They still need to approve them? I mean, don't we need to reevaluate some of this? Carolyn, they don't approve every agenda that we send. In fact, we've cut down on how much we used to use them. I remember years ago, we used to actually have one of the attorneys. Actually I'm not concerned about what you did here. years ago. All right, Carolyn, I waited until you no were done. I'm talking now. For them I am to review now, an agenda. Carolyn. Carolyn, we have cut back on the amount of time we've had attorneys come in and spend time with us. And I know that our director followed what the attorneys told her she was supposed to do. Um, that's the good. Petition. Okay, I'm not finished. Can I go on? My last point is, why do we need to hire an attorney to work with Greg and BEC to create a bid? If we can't you ask, bid, you asked that they review it. You said you want to make no, sure no, that no, the they, attorneys this is review creating, the contract. No, this is creating the bid. I asked, they include, they already created this without a clause to protect the library. See, that's unbelievable. But my point is, we should be able to create our own bids and our own proposals. We should have qualified staff to do that. If we're going to pay a company to submit a bid, why are we paying them to write it? It's not a taxpayer's expense, and it should not be. All right. Okay, Carolyn, um, I think we have a response here from Greg. Um, we did not use them to write the bid. What we used them for was to uh, review the contract uh, between the library and uh, BEC. Uh, they had some modifications, which uh, BEC ultimately uh, accepted and uh, protected us, including a, including a cancellation clause. So there, oh. what, in September, there was a cancellation clause. Excuse me, in the contract. In there's a can in the contract. There is a clause in inserted in the contract. Okay, we, and we haven't seen the contract yet, and it's already been created in September. Well, the um, uh, the way it worked is that the board uh, selected BEC. and once they selected BEC, they gave us the uh, power to go ahead and contract with them. Uh, which when is did we, we select BEC? Um, I'd have to review the minutes to get an exact date. Yeah. Wasn't it just recently? Yes. Okay. So these, September these is recent. Go, pardon me? I think September is recent, but I don't know if it was in September. No, I thought we just saw BEC a month ago. BEC, BEC was at the meeting. Yeah. It was before yeah. I was on board that that yeah. was accepted. So that right. was October. So in... So we accepted them in October, but in September, the lawyers reviewed the contract? I don't know if it was October. I know it was last fall. I can't remember exactly what board meeting it was at. I have a question. So, and then they came back last uh, month to discuss their recommendations. But it says review communication from library to provide opinion for professional services contract. So are we generating the contract or is BEC? Uh, I, think I worked with uh, BEC and uh, in working with BEC, we generated a contract uh, together uh, where we agreed upon the commercial terms. 
and then we made sure that uh, the right protections were in by having uh, Pinethorpe and Jenkins review it. And the proposal we saw is not the contract that you are talking about. No, uh, you know, I, the contract was not a part of that proposal. Becky? Yeah, I have two questions. Uh, one is, um, Carolyn, the papers that you're referring to that you've been reviewing, I'm wondering if that's something that we all have, or what is that? Oh, no, you don't get this. I had a FOIA. In order to get any information, I have to FOIA. I am perfectly Wait, happy I to send the legal, excuse me, bills to all of the trustees. So if I'm we already have that information and don't have to pay more to get it, I would like a copy of that. And I Certainly. don't know why that might not be normal practice to share that with all board members if it's been FOIA'd by a board member. Uh, my second question is why we are discussing this at all right now since it's not on the agenda. Because it's part of the attorney's fees that, that Susan, that our treasurer brings up every month. And I want to highlight, we should not be using our attorney for every single transaction in the library. That's why I brought it up. Okay, I, I feel like I don't not prepare for that because I don't have that information. So I don't feel competent in that conversation. We are supposed to be discussing this particular month, Treasury report. Anything else should be brought up at another time, other information. So we're on review financial reports. Patty has gone through them. I've asked if there are any questions about the financial reports. We will move on to payment of the bills next, unless there's any other questions. Uh, that's what we need to do now. So I will move on to payment of the bills. Um, did you vote? And I will say that if um, did you vote, Karen? Well, no, we no, we didn't. We just reviewed the financial reports. That's as far as we got. We didn't actually get to the payment of the bills yet. Got it. Uh, but I will say if that is something that uh, um, Becky would like to see, Susan, um, and you have uh, responded to Carolyn with those documents, uh, please do share those with the rest of the board members too. He did do that. All right, pardon? Thank you. Happy to. Okay. Um, all right, so now we are on payment of the bills. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the operating expenses of $165,902.21? Payroll expenses of $270,147.97 for a total monthly expense of $436,050.18. Do I have such a motion? Motion. Second. I second. Okay. All right. Now, are there any questions or comments regarding the bills that are in our packet? I have I one general question. Yes. Is the contract for 18,720 to... Which page are you on? Um, I'm actually not on... I'm looking at our uh, agenda. We're going to approve web links. Is that amount included in this month's um, bill, um, checks or is, is it included after we approve it? So yeah, we, we haven't approved so it yet. Yeah, so it's, so it's a bid uh, for the board to approve. And we have not spent any money with web links. So there are no bills in this month for web links. Oh, so this amount is not included this month. All right, thank you. All right, unless there's any other questions, um, Cindy, would you conduct a roll call? Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Erin? Yes. Carolyn? Um, no. Becky? Yes. Diane? Yes. Umar? Yes. Okay, thank you. Next on our agenda is director's report. Uh, and communications. Would you, Susan, please address both of those items? Certainly. Um, I don't have anything in particular to address with my director's report, except that we are continuing to monitor the uh, COVID rates 
They were going up for a little while, which we had expected. They this last week have been going down every day. So I have uh, met with the staff this afternoon and we have started mapping out what we need to do to be able to open the building back up to patrons again. Uh, and what I have told them is the same thing I'll tell you, which is um, I'm not gonna announce a date to the public at this time. Uh, because I'd want to keep watching those COVID rates. It, this might be a little blip where they're going down, or it might be just the beginning of a lovely long slope, which would be a very beautiful thing. Uh, so we are keeping an eye on it, but we're also simultaneously getting ready to reopen. So uh, there are some concerns amongst the staff. Um, the, the children's department, I think, struggled a little bit more with having people in the building because the you know what what they what was pointed out in the meeting this afternoon is that adults and children use the library in a different way so like uh the teenagers for example when they come in to teen underground they don't care if there are no chairs they sit on the tables and the families that are coming into kids space and there might be kind of large numbers a couple families coming in together they're always used to sitting on the floor anyway so they just all sit on the floor and so not having furniture is not a deterrent to them to not stay in the building a long time. So we're trying to figure out the best way to address that. But I just wanted you to be aware that we're very much, you know, we want to be open. We don't want to be closed. I just don't want to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So I think that that is bad for, bad for communicating. It's uh, very confusing to people. Um, I do want to address what Carolyn said. I have pulled the minutes from the meeting where the attorney was here in the minutes that were approved by the board, um, Trustee Durblick explained that the purpose of her request for the agenda item was that she wanted an explanation of the director's role in receiving referendum petitions. She referred to several specific questions Director Lemke asked Mr. Euler and expressed concern that she was wasting her time and the attorney's time asking questions that could form the basis for an objection, as Carolyn just indicated again tonight. Mr. Euler explained that all of the questions asked were excellent given the director's role as local election official. So I just want to remind the board that I am being sued by Mr. McCullough for carrying out my job as the local ele election official to certify or not certify based on the attorney's opinion. The, our attorney's opinion was that the community did not have standing to put that referendum question on the ballot, so I couldn't do so. So that is why I, I followed our attorney's instructions. I'm not an attorney. I needed to follow the law according to them. So I really resent being put in this position, quite frankly. That is all I have for the director's report. Okay, um, Carolyn, you, you are on mute. Okay, I, I can't hear you. Carolyn, you need to unmute yourself. Okay, well, we'll circle back. I'm gonna make a couple of comments and then uh, we can circle back. No, I'm here. I got gotcha. you. I, I, I didn't hear all of what Susan said, but can you, you hear me or am I going in and out? We can hear you. You can? Okay. I had a question for, I had two questions for Susan. One was, I read somewhere about the opening of the library um, or, or something about you can make appointments to use the computers. Correct. Is that now? Yeah. That, that's correct. Yeah, and that's is, been since November. What's the time frame that you can come in and use the computers? Like when you make an appointment? It's during our open hours. No, I meant like you're like if I make an appointment, I get 15 minutes or oh, you get uh, 45. Okay, 45 all right. Minutes. Thank you. All right, yeah, thanks for that. And then, can two people come in and work on the computer? Not like on, together. Like Not on at the, the same place. Not at okay, the same computer, but you could certainly two people could book two different computers. Oh, okay. So if we are working on a project, we can't do that. Uh, probably not. Okay, uh, that's okay. I, I, I had something going on. It's fine. And then my second, my second question was, um, the reason I brought up the attorney was when I asked, and I'm not throwing this your way. I know you do what you're told by our law firm. What I, what I asked him was, your questions 
to me can also be viewed as objection. He right. said they, they could be part of your whatever role is and objections. My position is an objection is not something she needs to move on. But if the attorney tells you that's your role, then that's that's why you're in court right now. But I'm not throwing this at you. I'm just saying we already had this conversation and there was no reason why that petition should not be filed. And he already said that. So, I mean, it's, it's no, right. No, it's no, no, right. Carolyn, that, that I must dispute. He did not ever say that that petition could be filed. He said I should I not. I have his exact I sentence. Right. I can't remember. Just, just listen to the December tape. And listen to his statement. I ask that we put think his statement in the good. minutes to prevent this problem from happening. And I was denied. But please listen to the video. All right, that's all I have to say. Carolyn, uh, with all due respect, you have two lawyers sitting here listening to you trying to legally analyze uh, what a third lawyer is advising our director to do. Really, I mean, you know, I wouldn't do that being in a different area of law. And I'm sure that Karen uh, uh, feels the same way. You know, you have to leave the attorney's expertise in their specific area of law here. And and Susan's got to follow this person's advice. And it really doesn't matter what the rest of us are saying about this. These are very, you know, legal strategies, a very technical area where something can seem very proper but there are, you know, there's some very nuanced rule which says, no, under these particular circumstances, you can't do this thing. Uh, you know, I, I, I defer to our counsel. I assume, you know, this is, predates my time. I assume we've uh, hired a competent counsel yeah. and I would just recommend the rest of us stay out of it, to be, to be honest. Okay, Umar, just to clarify what I was trying to say, I am not questioning the attorney's strategy. I am just confirming his statement, December 19th, when I brought these questions to him. I totally understand it's the attorney's decision and we're following it. But I'm not questioning his strategy, just reminding everyone of his initial statement. And that's all the point I'm it, trying to make. Fair enough. But sure. but I, I should add that as a case develops, sometimes something you would say at a certain point in a case, you will you will advise a client differently based on the right. way the case develops and based on things right. that occur after you made a particular statement or gave a particular recommendation or took a particular position. Just want to add that from my experience and I'm sure Karen has had very similar experiences. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, I wanted to comment on the director's report too. Um, Susan, I want to congratulate you on being asked to add a chapter to the book, Pivoting During the Pandemic. About, that's, actually, uh, that's actually Susie Wolf. Has contributed oh, I'm to sorry. head of technical, head of digital. Oh, different Susie. Sorry. Yes. Well, please, never mind. No, I, I will mean, pay I'll those congratulations to Susie. Yes, I my congratulations to her. Okay, fine. Uh, but perhaps you can tell us a little bit about buying, being a star library. What does that involve uh, to uh, demonstrate that you're entitled to that award? Yeah, it is, um, they use the statistics that we, we always have to file our Illinois Public Library Annual Report every year, and that gets fed into the National uh, Institute of Museums and Libraries Report, and that's where they pull the data from, and it looks at our print circulation, our ebook cir circulation, our e-resources use, our door count, our budget, all of those things, and, um, and so we're just literally, it's data numbers stacked against the other libraries. So we were in the top 2% of libraries in Illinois, and Illinois has more libraries than most library than most in the country. So yeah, it's a great honor, and uh, we're, I'm very happy to have it. Um, somebody, one of the reporters called the, the originator of the survey, and he said that our print circulation is excellent. That was one of the things that boosted us above the other libraries, along with our program attendance. Um, but that our ebook use is considerably below other libraries. And I thought that was very e interesting. Ebooks? But that, yes, but this was in 2018. This is data from uh, 2018. Yeah. So I think it will be changing now. So I, but I have, I, as I always say, Niles is not early developers of technology. They, they start <laughs> using, they continue using their old technologies and they might just sort of little by little get their toes into the new waters. So, so. 
get, okay. get up, you end up with question. double le formats for a long time. Can I ask you one question about uh, the COVID um, reopening plan? Yes. Uh, where do uh, people who work at the library fall in terms of the state's uh, in terms of the state's uh, vaccination plan? Yeah, sadly, we're kind of nowhere. Um, I, I was meeting with the group of Niles Township people this last week, and the um, the director of the Skokie Public Library was trying to get the director of the Skokie Public Health Department to agree that the library workers and the park district workers could be in the same category with like the grocery store people. Um, and he said only if you were helping out in the clinic, then those people could be vaccinated, but he was not going to put the library workers in that category. So we are in with everybody else. I do have a, a letter that the state of Illinois has sent out or the uh, Illinois Li State Library has sent out that I can modify and ask, you know, you know, Cook County and the Illinois Department of Health and sort of, you know, add our two cents to why these uh, frontline workers ought to be able to get the vaccines. But frankly, I'm not optimistic based on that conversation last week because they just, they just don't have very many vaccines yet. That oh, it may change, but yeah, right now we're uh, we're at the end of the line with everybody else. At least you're ahead of the mink. You think? I don't know. I think I'm behind the mink, so. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, and I licked myself up. I was like 258 millionth in line or something. <laughs> yeah. All right, okay. Um, thank you very much for the report. Um, and I think we need to move to the next items. And we're now down on new business, moving away from the routine and to some new items. Uh, first, we have under number 11A, recommended action on the extension of the Family First Coronavirus Response Act leave benefits through March 31st, 2021. And we do have some uh, information in our packet about this. Uh, the Families First uh, Act, um, it, it did a couple of things, expanded FMLA to what's called emergency FMLA and to include two weeks of paid leave for employees who have to care for family members, et cetera. There's a number of benefits that uh, were provided through the Families First Response Act. And uh, it's a couple of the components within it, the emergency FMLA and the emergency paid sick leave. So that all was by federal law extended to employees all employees under applicable employers uh, through the end of the year. Um, but um, we may, or all employers may, extend these benefits uh, beyond that. Um, the provision for mandatory leave under the emergency FMLA was not one of those provisions which was extended. Um, that is voluntaries. So um, I'm going to turn to Susan and Greg to see if they have any other details they want to add about this. So what we have here is a decision to make. Do we want to extend these benefits? And, and right now, uh, the proposal that we have before us is to extend it to March 31st, which is a three-month extension. I mean, you, we could extend it longer. Uh, there's nothing magical about March 31st. Um, but that is, that's the issue before us now. So Susan, would you like to make any more comments on this and or Greg? Yeah, we do, we do have um, paid time off for people. So they could be using that, but a number of them have been using that, you know, because we've been on the team schedule, they are not in the building all of the time. And some people don't have a lot of work they can do from home. So they have been using a lot of their paid time off as the year went on, which is actually why the salary line of the budget is a little, of the uh, expenses is a little higher than we had anticipated. So this would, um, this would just ensure that anybody that had COVID symptoms or had a close contact with someone with COVID had two weeks of paid time off to stay home and not come in to work, which I think, I, would, I just want any tool I can have to encourage people to take the safest possible route. So that was why I, uh, it, it's up to the board whether they want to extend it, but, uh, but they have 
you know, made it a possibility and I, I would recommend it, but it is up to you. I don't know, Greg, this, I don't know if you have anything else you'd like to add. Yeah, I'd like to point out, um, you know, that we did when this was uh, first announced and then implemented, we did create a separate time code. And uh, I went back through uh, the time uh, records and found that from, uh, from March through December uh, last year, so, you know, roughly, uh, roughly 10 months, um, the library granted uh, around 250 hours of uh, FFCRA leave uh, to 11 employees. Uh, and uh, the total cost uh, of, of those uh, hours is about $5,000. So, um, you know, I think, it, you know, it sounds like, you know, it sounds like a, a, a big commitment, but I think our history has shown that it's it's relatively small. So, I mean, if we prorated that amount out for another three months, it could be another fifteen hundred dollars, maybe. Yeah, I mean, we would fifteen hundred or two thousand. We're, we're not assuming that, but. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the the reality of it is, uh, Karen, that you know, um, ten months ago things looked a lot different. You know, our infection rates are higher than they were 10 months ago. Uh, there's talk of uh, the new, uh, more contagious uh, strains of the virus and so forth, which, you know, we're not sure how that's going to uh, impact the numbers. I'm not sure that we've seen those impacts in any of the numbers that are being reported by uh, any of the um, online uh, services, you know, whether it's John Hopkins or World Meter or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, could be more. Um, you know, it could be less, uh, but, you know, I think overall it's, you know, it's pretty small. I think as a population, uh, the library employees are pretty careful. Um, and as a matter of fact, uh, you know, we like the fact that, you know, they're, they're more likely to self-declare and stay home instead of thinking about, oh, it's my week in the library, so I have to be there. Um, and, uh, and slipping in and possibly infecting uh, other employees. Uh, okay, so um, technically, I suppose we should get this on the table as a motion before oh, uh, discussing it further. Um, do I have a motion to approve the extension of the Family First Corona Response Act benefits through March 31st of 2021? Do, do I have such a motion? I have a motion from Patty. Is there a second, second from Becky? All right, now it's on the floor. Do we have any uh, discussion regarding this motion? Carolyn. Hi. Um, okay, my, my question is, this is for employees yeah. who contract COVID or their, or their family members, so That's they can fine. be home to take care of them, correct? Okay. I don't know that we should put a price tag on it because, you know, I guess we've been fortunate, but we really don't know what's going to happen. But if the act is extending it to March something, I, I would think we should go along with that. Um, but I had one question. Susan, some time ago, I think the state reimbursed you for COVID expenses. It sounded like COVID cleaning supplies. Does this fall under any kind of funding from the federal or state government? No, it would be, we would be paying it all up front. We have not okay. actually received the money, the federal money through the county yet either, by the way. Still um, have not yeah, typical. Okay, I, I was just wondering, but, but I mean, it's something that we, we really can't, there isn't much we could do about it, but it, we need it. So, okay, just wanted to clarify who's covered. I get it. All right, thanks. Okay, any other questions or comments about this uh, motion, which is on the table? All right, um, hearing none, uh, I will ask Cindy to conduct a roll call. Um, Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Becky? Yes. Diane? Yes. Umar? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Let's move to our next item under new business, which is the which is regarding a contract for web links. Um, 
We do have a description of this in our board packet, which uh, we can look at. This is on page 35 of our board packet. Um, I suppose I should ask for a motion first before we start discussing this further. Is there a motion to a motion? Patty? Second. And Diane. All right, so we do have a motion to award the contract for $18,720 to WebLinks to redesign and implement the library's new website. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna start out with a question. And of course, I put it up to questions for other people too. Oh, Sasha, hi. Yeah, I, have, I have Sasha here to answer any questions and I don't okay. know if you want to say a few words. All right, all right. And I'm gonna start out with a, with a tough one here. I think the web website looks pretty good as it is. Why, why do we need to create a new website? And, and, and why do we need to spend $18,000 at a minimum to do it? Is, is my question, what, what can you tell us? Well, first and foremost, I just wanna say hi, everybody. I've not seen you virtually <laughs> or in person in such a long time, hello. <laughs> um, and really good questions, Karen. Um, what I do wanna mention is our website is about eight years old now. And in the website world, I should say, from my research, typically you make tweaks or upgrades to your website every three to five years. I can say, while being part of the process these past eight years of helping with updating the website and kind of overseeing it, we have not done any major tweaks to the website. Uh, you know, I, I would say probably we can compare the website to a dog, eight dog years, you know what I mean? Compared to like eight website years, it's a lot. And you make a really good point by saying it looks fine, but there's actually a lot of broken bones in, 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 in this, in this individual, is the best way that I could describe it. Um, we, so every website has a content management system that it's run through. So the content management system that we use is called Drupal. And we use version seven. And unfortunately, Drupal has moved on to newer versions. So Drupal 7 is no longer supported. Uh, I also want to mention that every website has what's called a theme. So it's not necessarily the design of the colors and such, but basically it's functionality and how the menu looks, probably the best way that I could describe it. That theme is also not supported anymore. So hold on just one second, Sasha. I'm sorry. I'm going to need to mute everyone except for Sasha because we're getting so much feedback. It's going to ruin the recording. But you can unmute yourself when you need to. All righty. Uh, so um, as I was saying, with the theme also not being supported. So where does that leave us? That leaves us with just like how on our cell phones, once in a while, Apple, Android, or whatever cell phone you use, there is a software update that comes about. And the software update is there to make sure that the bad guys don't get in your phone and that it's running with a new look, new programs, or whatever the case may be. So at this point right now, we are only able to make a small amount of software updates. So we are I don't know what the word is, liable, or I mean, we, we, there is an opportunity for our website to be hacked. Now, I understand we're not a bank, we're not, you know, we don't sell anything, but, you know, I also wouldn't want to wake up tomorrow morning with, you know, some sort of negative message that somebody wanted to put on our homepage either. So, <laughs> so, um, so besides age, besides that, you know, the software that we're currently using is not up to date. Um, I do also want to mention that from time to time, I do get emails from Google and they are sending me emails saying that parts of the website are, um, from how I understood their email, not up to accessibility standards. That however, the modules were built or the text boxes eight years ago just do not match the criteria that, um, you know, is asked for for websites nowadays. Um, I think those were all my reasons. <laughs> I think you have to unmute, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thanks for that explanation. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Um, yes, Becky. I'm wondering if this is the first time the board has heard about this. I know it is for me because I'm new, but uh, have you guys, because I noticed in the information too that these, uh, proposals were to start in September, I think, and be finished by March. And so that hasn't happened. So obviously they've been around for a while. 
I don't um, think we've heard about it before tonight. I don't think so. No. Okay. Yeah, it was I on also was wondering... We were working on it with when the pandemic hit. And so, you know, I didn't, we, you know, we just, we were, our attention was elsewhere, but we got to the point where it was like, okay, it's time to go ahead and do this. We budgeted money for it. We really better had to go ahead. So it, you've heard about it just in the sense that it was in the budget, but other than that, no. I was also wondering, um, the company that we used for the website that we have now uh, is not one of the bids, is that right? And if so, why? We didn't go to them again. Um, well, well, they didn't, unfortunately, did not submit an RFP, but I, but yeah, I mean, that's probably the, the main reason <laughs> that they're not, a, in, you know, in the running for the job. Are these bids still valid? I mean, I don't know how old they are Thanks. now. Yes, we have contacted them recently. Um, everything, you know, ends, you know, the same. Um, and, you know, when we asked them were there any new changes or anything like that, and there were not. Um, the lowest bid that we have here is Weblinks. Um, do we have any information about the reputation of this firm? Absolutely. We did, um, Robin, who was the marketing coordinator who works in my department, um, she was tasked with um, calling their um, recommendations. Um, I know she spoke to Indian Trails Library in Wheeling, um, and I think she spoke to a couple more, and they all um, expressed uh, great thoughts um, about web links. So um, that helped definitely in, in making our, our decision. Not that the other company did not have good recommendations, but um, our, we're proposing to go with web links. Um, I want to open it up to other questions or comments that other board members might have. I have one more question. Yes, Becky. <laughs> Sorry. How oh, long do we please. expect, like, is it going to be like another eight year kind of thing? Is it about every, do we, like how long is the time period generally for a website to be good and functioning? From my research, but I mean, it's it's probably up to the organization and what was built for them in the first place. Um, you know, we're hoping for a great product based off of how many libraries Weblinks has worked with, but not just that, um, their reputation also with other nonprofits and for-profits as well. Um, but from, from my research about every three to five years, either you make a tweak with, and I don't wanna use the word trends because we're not trying to make the website cool as much as we're trying to make for the user experience to be a click or two. Uh, we know that none of us are patient patient nowadays to be searching on a website for something. You kind of want it nice and quick. So, um, you know, our hope is that we will get, you know, the newest, the most best user experience for our residents. So, you know, I can't say right now that we're gonna have a new one in five years. We haven't had one in eight years. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, we hope that this will last us uh, quite some time. All right, thank you. Okay, other questions? Carolyn? Carolyn, you're on mute. Okay, you mentioned that the current company that the company that created the current website was unavailable. So I'm wondering what's the comparison between the Weblinks website and the one we have now? What are they bringing to us? Carolyn, I just want to mention, I don't, I didn't think that I mentioned that they were unavailable as much as they didn't submit anything. They did not submit um, an RFP to be um, one of the choices. Um, if I know, can jump in there. Library you, Market, Saka? just with its name on its own, they. Yeah, I, I just, um, the company we used before was a company called Mighty Bytes and they had a lot of really big clients and they wanted to try working with a library. I don't think they were thrilled with the experience. I think it turned out to be much more challenging to them than they thought it was going to be because we kept saying that our databases, that getting the databases on the website was going to be tricky because it's going off to the, all these off-site companies and, and off-site places. And they, we kept telling them that, but it's like they weren't hearing us. So I can't say that we exactly went and pursued them. And they were also quite expensive because they did, you know, we were using per capita money that year and that was what it was all designated for. So 
Um, yeah, I don't think that we would make the same choices again. And a lot of the personnel there have turned over in any case. So that's, it's nothing against them. And it's not that we were dissatisfied or anything, but, you know, I don't think that they, I think they went in a different direction after they worked with their first library. Okay, go. All right, so back to my question. Um, so Mighty Bites, I remember seeing that name enough times. Okay, so that's who created our current website. What does this web link propose to give us? I mean, besides the fact you're concerned somebody could um, get into our website and, you know, put something there we don't want to see. I mean, again, I'll tell you, my, my biggest issue is we're in the middle of a pandemic. Our website looks incredible. I don't know that we need to venture in this direction. But more importantly, I always want to know what we were given the first time and how this change compares to what we have. Like there should be equalities, there should be differences, and, and I don't see any comparisons. I don't have a problem in tech, in the tech world, when people change, you know, when employees leave and go, it's just the nature of being in tech. But I, you know, I wonder what we are expecting from this new company um, a, a larger company couldn't provide us what we needed. And I know Susan mentioned databases. Now I believe our databases have gone, have been renovated numerous times or there's been a lot of work done with them. And I'm wondering, was that a factor? But initially my question to you, Sasha, is why, what's the difference between a website created by Mighty Bytes and one by Weblinks? it's going to be total change? Well, it will absolutely be a total change. I mean, from ground zero. I mean, the, when the project is done, I wouldn't expect it to look any which way the same that it looks right now, except probably the blue, maybe the blue color, because that's our main color and our logo, because it's not changing. Um, that's all, you know, I mean, Mighty, Bun Mighty Bites was much more expensive than even the higher bid that you're seeing in front of you. So, you know, to be honest, I wouldn't even suggest them again, because, because exactly like what you're saying, we can get a website for a more cost effective price. And I think what we have provided in front of you, I mean, I don't remember exactly the cost. I remember it was much, much more, like I said, than even the highest bid that's in front of you. Um, you know, all website companies are gonna give you, you know what I mean, a website, you know? So I think, you know, I think you make a great point about the pandemic, but the flip side of that is how many people have been coming to our website since the pandemic that have never come before? Oh, no, absolutely. And, and what problems have we endured? Currently, as, as I mentioned with like, you know, like I said, I don't like to use the word trends because we're not getting a new website, like I said, to be cool. We're getting it to make it as, you know, effective and as efficient as possible. Uh, currently, there's something called uh, either if you've heard of a drop down menu or a mega menu, which allow. Yeah, I've created a few websites in my time. Okay. Um, so I'm so, familiar. Yeah. So currently we do not have that. You know, that's just one of, of many things that we're trying to fix okay. the website. Right now, you have to click on using the library to find in the menu your next thing to find. And like I said, one thing we can all agree on today is, you know, we've lost our patience. <laughs> and we're, you know, when we when we go surfing the net, we want to find it quick and fast. And, um, you know, with working with me for many, many years, you know what I mean? I do think about the patrons. I do think about their experience. And I want them to have a positive experience when they come on our website. Surely. Now, Sasha, you mentioned you contacted some other libraries who are using web links. So you've Correct. been on their website and you've seen the how you get around and what have you. Absolutely. And you're satisfied with that? Okay, because yes. that's probably the best trial then. Yes. Right? No, but you're absolutely right about not being able to have a quick access in a drop down as opposed to clicking all over creation. All well, right, well, thank yeah. you. All right, I Patty. Do say we currently have a module that says quick links on the homepage. And my philosophy is if you have a quick links module, people aren't finding it how they're supposed to find it. So I would love for them to not, you know, have to resort to one little module, but actually find their way much easier with the regular menu. Good point. Yes. Good point. Asha, I've been using a, an iPad. And to be honest, I'm honestly thinking of going back to 
a regular computer because, or something different, because I am having problems with a lot of different websites with an iPad. For some reason, things don't show up the same, or it's harder to get onto things. I've had problems getting on the website and finding things. I don't know if other people with Apple products have the same problem. So if this helps, God, it's wonderful. Okay. Uh, Diane, did I see your hand up? Yeah. But remember to unmute yourself. Okay. Um, based on everything that Sasha has said, um, I think it's really crucial that we update our um, system. I mean, think eight years. Eight years in the tech world is forever. It, think eight years ago, the things that we didn't have that we use these days, even in our phones. Many times we have to update our phones. We have to do it practically two or three times a year. I mean, if we're unable to update, we're unable to uh, protect ourselves from hackers, uh, you know, it's time. Eight years is a long time. I think we should update. And I support the proposition. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions? One last question. Yeah. Sasha, in terms of security, is there not something we can do with the security we currently have to protect that website until it's changed, replaced, or updated? There you are. Now I'm the person that's on mute. <laughs> okay, now I hear you. Okay. Sorry. Um, we, uh, for some of what I like to call the bigger projects that we do not have the knowledge for, we do use a third party web developer to make right. professional updates. And every single mm -hmm. time that um, he makes them, he goes, you guys really need to choose something. You know what I'm saying? Like we can't move to Drupal 8 or 8 point whatever they're on right now with the current theme. So there's a roadblock. So that's why we're talking about that both the theme, so the functionality and how the website looks, as well as our content management system are just not supported anymore. So um, I don't have in front of me exactly like how many updates we're able to do versus how many not, but I've, I've heard for a very, very long time, like this project is definitely a long time coming. I think with the pandemic, as Susan said, it did kind of stop us. There were other projects uh, you know, even before the pandemic that stopped us from kind of working on it. And, you know, we really do think because of all that, this is the time to get this, okay. to be you know, up to date with everything. And like I said, to, you know, have a better user. No, I understand. I understand your interest in, in updating, but back to security, our servers cannot protect our website. I don't, I don't know if Greg wanted to mention Yeah, that. allow me uh, to make a comment or two. Um, so this, uh, this website is not housed in the current server farm. We actually, uh, because it's public access, we actually house it outside of, um, of the library. So if, um, if it was hacked, the only thing that would be hacked would be uh, would be the uh, the website itself on the server farm outside of ours where it's housed. Um, I think what Sasha was saying before, he is able, you know, we are able to make some of the security updates, but, you know, it's not, um, it's not without a lot of angst and, um, you know, and doing uh, uh, things that, you know, are kind of jury rigged at this point. So um, what we'd like to do is update it so that it's uh, so it's more secure, takes a lot less effort, and is a, a smoother running uh, operation as well as providing an, a, a superior uh, uh, patron experience. So Greg, once it's updated, it will still be housed at an outside source because it's public. Yes, yeah, I think that's um, I think that's a state of the art. Um, you know, most uh, websites are housed uh, uh, away from the critical, mission critical uh, server farms. So how do we benefit in terms of security with the well, new system or so new website? With, I'm sorry. 
uh, with the new system, the uh, security updates would be a more natural and regular thing. You know, um, when you turn off your computer at night, um, very often uh, when I turn off my computer at night uh, at home, um, I have an update from Microsoft for Windows 10. And a lot of those updates uh, happen in the uh, uh, overnight uh, hours. And then when I turn on the, the computer in the morning, um, I'm all updated and all the latest security patches are in. We're not able to do that, uh, you know, with this website. With this website, it takes a lot more um, uh, management and a lot more pushing. It takes up a lot more time. You know, what we, okay. what we like to do is have it, you know, not, you know, not be something that takes so much care and feeding. And that's, uh, you know, that's one of the main goals. Um, but the most significant goal is, as I said, is to provide a superior patron uh, experience. All right, thank you, Greg. All right, then unless there are any further questions, I will ask Cindy to conduct uh, a roll call. Okay, Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Uh, no. Becky? So professional, Patty. Becky? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Diane. Thank you. She's, she's giving you a thumbs up. Umar. Umar, we can't see or hear you. Umar? Yes, Umar? yes. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Was that it? Can we get everyone? Yes. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to the next item. This is a discussion of the temporary suspension of our parking lot lease with Culver School just across the street. So um, we've discussed this at one or two previous meetings and we asked Susan Lemke to see if we might uh, temporarily at least get out of the lease that we have with District 71. Uh, Susan, do you want to report on that? Yes, um, I contacted the uh, superintendent of District 71 to see um, if he would be willing to bring it before the board. I, I wanted to check with him to find out if it would have too much of a you know budgetary impact on them because obviously they budgeted for having this revenue, but he thought that it would be all right. So he uh, put it before their board last night. And what we asked for is just a six month uh, suspension of the intergovernmental agreement so that we would be able to suspend the payment of that bill for six months. Six months was what I chose. I think that by then we may have the library being more busy again and we might need it again. And I don't want to get rid of the lease altogether. I think that it has been a good solution for us and it should the library get busy again, we will need that again. But but I you know, it, hate to keep putting that much money in. And I did remind him that we have paid for the, our, you know, we pay, kept up our agreement for nine months. And so he was happy to bring it to them. I have been informally told that they have agreed to it. I have not officially been told that they agreed to it. But that's All where right. it stands right now. So that six month suspension would run from January 1st to June 30th. Yep. All right, now, um, I don't know if you need any formal action from us. We're uh, not expending any money. In fact, we're saving money by a result of this. Um, if, if they come back to me and say that they would like uh, an official resolution from you, then I certainly will come back and ask you for that. But as of right now, they just met last night. So I have not, and I have not heard back from them. So. I only heard from what from our, you know, resident board member has told us that they agreed to it, but I don't know if they're going to come back and ask us to make any kind of a formal declaration. All right. No, I, I wouldn't I be surprised that if it said that in the agreement that any uh, modifications needed to be in writing. Yeah, it's a lease agreement. That wouldn't surprise um, me. Yeah, of course. Um, Carolyn. Hi, um, I have a question. We have a 25 year lease agreement with them, correct? Can you hear me? 
I don't Hello? know if it's I don't know if it's 25 years. Uh, I was told we have a 25 year parking lease agreement. And I think I got a copy of it, and I was wondering what the years were. I didn't pull the lease agreement for tonight's meeting. I apologize. But what I wanted to ask you, Susan, was the purpose of that parking lot was supposed to be for staff because we didn't want them using library spots. Uh, yeah, and we did not want them parking on the street because we were getting angry phone calls from the residents. Right, and I know I think every budget year I've brought this up. I think I've been on the board seven years now. And um, I do recall one conversation you had with us. You mentioned that you couldn't force the staff to park across the street. There were some issues about actually crossing the street and then some employees brought notes from their doctors preventing them from parking across the street. So, and then and then to add to this, you know, I had gotten more in the summer, more phone calls in last year about nobody's parking across the street and we pay for this every month. But the real reason I would like to see us reconsider this parking lease agreement is we are across the street from post office, the village, the senior center, and Home Depot, and well, and Culver. None of them have lease agreements for parking, and yet the village, the senior center have huge events and probably more huge events than we do. And they're able to handle their parking. I'm not saying that's going to work for us, but the library does offer many resources, especially to Culver, due to the close proximity of their school. I, I would like to think that maybe the library could be more of an innovative community partner. And when we need parking, Home Depot would facilitate us, the village would, or even Culver, without expecting us to carry out this 25-year lease agreement. I mean, mostly because no one else in our immediate area needs it. And why wouldn't we, during a pandemic, that it's really not being used, now ask to have it eliminated. Well, that, that is a board decision, but I mean, as far as I'm concerned, during the pandemic, you are not paying for it now. And uh, and then in six months, if you decide you want to break the agreement, you can. The agreement was written that either side could terminate it at any point. So, you know, that is up to you, but I would certainly recommend against it at this time. And I don't think there's any reason to do it at this time. They have just agreed graciously to allow us to not pay for it. So it would be a slap in their face to say, well, by the way, we're going to turn no, it that, they, They'll be fine. But did I miss uh, hear you? I'm not so sure about that. You said um, there. You know what, Carolyn, I think I'm going to take a chance to talk I, I need to add, I didn't hear what she said. Did you say we're not paying for the lease agreement now? I said for they just agreed to not for that during this pandemic we will not be paying for the for the next six months. Yeah, so they've already agreed to that, not officially, but that's well, my, what well, I the understand. The problem with that, but the problem with that, Susan, is once again you go to the president, you have a conversation with her, and then you you move on it. We don't have a board decision or Carolyn, a discussion. What are you talking no about? No other ideas Carolyn. ever come up. Carolyn, you are the one who wanted to suspend that lease agreement. We talked about Eliminated. this at the last meeting. No, I don't want. I don't want to. No, six we're talking about Carolyn, suspending Carolyn, Carolyn, just it. One other thing here. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Before before it looks like everybody. We we are part of. Uh, we are are not. No, we are a district library, that is serving the village of Niles. This is a school in the local district. Main township. Web it's actually nice. Yeah. But, but either way, either way, the money is ultimately coming from the same place. So whether we're paying them or not, it's it's an accounting issue at the end of the day. It's not it's not anything more than that. Excuse me. That's true. And um, Linda has had her hand up for a while. I'd like to recognize Linda. Uh, and this is not a Carolyn Durblick decision. This is a board decision. So please don't direct an order to Susan Lumpke. We would all have to talk about this and we don't have this on the agenda. So please, can we move on? 
Fine. What's okay. not on the agenda? Jeez. No, no, my point is Susan Lemke needs to talk to the entire board, not just one specific board member. I did. I, I talked to you at the last meeting. Last month, wasn't it? Yeah, we've talked about this last month. No, no, meeting. but we, we don't, you tell us, it. you tell us what you're going to do, but it's not an agenda item for discussion. Now it is an agenda item, and I'm bringing up a discussion, and your your and and Umar is telling me that paying eight hundred and eighty dollars a month from taxpayers who can't feed their families during a pandemic oh, for a okay. park okay. we don't use is okay. What what I am tell what excuse I'm saying me. what I'm saying don't, uh, please, excuse please me, don't put words in my mouth please don't put Maybe words in my mouth don't what I am saying what I am saying is that those taxpayers, if they're not paying for it on the library front, they will be paying the school. So it's the same set of taxpayers. It, at the end of the day, it doesn't make a difference. The taxpayers are either going to be paying less taxes for the library and more taxes for the school, or more taxes for the library and less taxes for the school. Either way, at the end of the bottom line is they're going to be paying the same amount, 880 divided by whatever, 25,000 taxpayers. It's going to end up being the same nickel that increased. It's going to decrease from. It's going to take from one, from one uh, bucket and put it in the other bucket. It's coming out of the same place. So it's really not something that's even worth. I mean, it's a waste of time. This All discussion right. is a waste a waste yeah. of time. Okay. All right. So we're not taking any formal action tonight, anyway. But we are getting an update. Thank you from Susan as to where this matter stands right now. Thanks for trying to. Save the library a little money, although Umer is correct that it's just a couple of tax bodies that are shifting money back and forth. That's true too. Um, so let's move on to uh, number 12, which is unfinished business, discussion and possible action. Excuse me, Trustee Diamond. Consultant. What? I, regarding Umar's statement, it's just a matter of All right, either... Carolyn, we are moving on. We are not okay, going no, back please. to talk about I, need, I, I have statement. a point to make. No, I no, have are, a point Carolyn, no, a we are on lot. another next agenda item. We are not debating. A I'm not debating. I'm asking you to clarify. Item. All right, let's move on. All right, we are on number 12. Yes, you move on, run away, business. spend the money. Discussion and possible action on solar consultant. All right, last time we met, uh, we did not get to this item. Uh, to consider. It was getting later and we, we decided to move on. Frank, uh, can I ask you to give us just a little refresher of what we've done so far along the lines of work, having the work, the roof work done and what is left in terms of decisions that need to be made by this board? Okay. Um, you know, so a few months ago, we hired uh, BEC, uh, who has uh, uh, been out to inspect the roof and uh, provide us with a uh, uh, provide us with a uh, condition report, which um, I believe was uh, delivered uh, on the 16th, if um, if I remember correctly. Um, what uh, their work relies on. Their work will take one course or another based upon the type of uh, solar installation and uh, the, the types of uh, solar panels that uh, the library decides to uh, pursue. Um, in, in as much as you know, people on the board and people in the library know uh, very little about solar installations, where we need to hire a consultant to help us make those choices and to give us the, uh, the best bang for our buck. Uh, on Wednesday, December 9th, we had a special meeting. Uh, the board had a special meeting and interviewed three firms, uh, Dewberry, Patrick, and a, um, um, I'd say a, a consortium of firms uh, under Circle Design Group. Uh, I've pr provided the, uh, you know, the price bids that they've uh, submitted. Um, I think all three firms uh, were qualified and had terrific pro uh, projects um, you know, that they presented to us, answered a lot of questions. Um, and I think the board just needs to make a decision at this point. 
All right, Greg, we have on page 87 mm -hmm. of our packet tonight, um, a list of those firms and their bid amounts. Uh, the bids uh, are over a pretty wide range. Um, do you have any information regarding the capability and reputation of the various bidders, in particular, the lowest bidder? I mean, because normally we're uh, looking at the lowest bidder. Is there any information that you have to share with us regarding the qualifications and reputation of Dewberry? Yeah, so um, uh, Dewberry has worked with um, Frederick Quinn uh, who, uh, if you remember, was the general contractor on the renovation that was done in 20, uh, uh, 2013. Um, and um, uh, they worked on a project with Frederick Quinn uh, not too far from, uh, from where I live. It's the uh, Village of Countryside Municipal Complex. And uh, it was not only solar, but um, you know, they also uh, did uh, some other projects the, uh, the whole focus was to make it a um, net zero uh, uh, building. So, you know, uh, not used, not taking any energy off the grid. Although during the times, during times of the year when uh, the solar uh, array isn't producing as much, they do take energy off the grid, but that they make up for that by selling energy into the grid during the summertime when they have an overabundance of uh of energy being produced. Um, so far, uh, my understanding is that the project has worked well. Um, it's about a little over a year since they've uh, you know, finished and basically turned the key on it. And uh, it seems to be functioning as designed and uh, the Village of Countryside has uh, you know, basically no energy cost. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, so what, um, well, I suppose to get this on, on the floor here, we should uh, have a motion to, uh, do I have a motion to select Dewberry, the lowest bidder as our solar consultant? Do I have such a motion? A motion. Linda and second, Diane. Okay, all right. So I'll open up the floor to uh, discussion. Now, we, we, of course, have interviewed these companies, looked at their materials. I hope you still have the packets of material to refer to if, if you, you know, need to or want to. Um, I still have mine here. Um, so, again, having talked to them, having interviewed them, looked at their materials, do we have any other questions um, or comments? regarding this matter. Diane, I see your hand up. Yes. Um, I thought we talked about last time um, having BEC kind of give us their input as far as which solar company might be uh, qualified to work with them. Are, are we not going to do that? That's fine if we're not. I just remember something like that. Um, so I, I did provide all of the um, uh, proposals uh, and the um, and the fee amounts to uh, uh, to BEC and they did take a look at them. Um, one of the concerns that they uh, raised about one of the consultants was it seemed like they worked uh, almost exclusively with one solar provider and they wondered if there was some sort of uh, sales commission that was involved. Um, I, I reached out to uh, that particular engineering firm and uh, asked them directly if, uh, if, they, if they did have a um, sales type arrangement, you know, with this uh, solar manufacturer. And they assured me that the uh, only fees, I'm sorry, the only revenue that they get from a job is based upon their fees. There are no uh, contingent or or um, uh, sales commission type fees that they collect from uh, one solar provider or another. Okay, thank you. Um, I also, uh, over. I looked at all the uh, paperwork from 
last month for these three companies. And I actually made a chart, pros and cons for each one. I didn't read every <laughs> piece of material because I really got yeah. bored. But um, uh, it's very interesting that I came up with Dewberry as being the only uh, company that didn't have a con statement in the church. All they had were pro statements. I really, when I looked at the material that they provided, I thought, I just loved the way they talked about why they do solar projects because of their interest in, in improving the environment and enriching the, the atmosphere and about the civic responsibilities and just I just thought they had a wonderful presentation and they also operate out of Lyle so I really support um, someone who is in the state of Illinois so um, that would be my choice and that besides the fact they give us a good price yeah I think um, Barry is actually in Elmhurst if I'm not mistaken oh still in the oh yeah of Elmhurst right yeah sorry Okay. Um, thank you. Are there other questions or comments? Carolyn? Um, Craig, um, I was reading through this information and I remember hearing last month that our monthly consumption is 90,000 kilowatts. No. <laughs> That's a that's an annual number, about ninety thousand kilowatt hours per year. That's our annual number. Yes. All right. I'm reading. The library now uses approximately ninety thousand kilowatt hours slash month. And that's so that, wrong. Yeah, that must uh, that must have been a misprint. Okay, so it is per year. Yes. All right, because I was, well, my first question was going to be, I'm looking at the ComEd bill, and because it's December, they're showing me every month, and we were nowhere near 90. Okay, but this is interesting. I, 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 so based on this ComEd bill, I thought, no, based on, I thought 90,000 a month, you know, I, I hate to quit. You're, you would know it's 90,000 a year, right? I mean, you, that has, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm stunned is, um, remember we talked about, um, who was it last month, Constellation Community Solar. Um, I happened to be in touch with a U.S. solar garden. Um, it's a company based out of Minnesota, and I was talking to her about um, the solar options for businesses, and they do offer it but you have to be considered a low usage company. And I thought if she said 90,000 to 100,000 a year, and I said, oh, we're 90,000 a month. And then I'm thinking, what are we doing? 90,000 kilowatts a month. But what's interesting is there is an option for you to go with a solar garden where you would not house the solar panels and they would be housed like in a, at, at their location and we would pay into them just like we're currently paying into Constellation. It would save us a tremendous amount of money. And this person would be willing to present since now we qualify. Wait, if you're let interested. Me, I, hang on, hang on a second, Carolyn. I'm... Uh... Taking a look here. Yeah, um, I have a view into our ComEd uh, electricity. Uh, okay. Yeah, I didn't metering. get a chance to do that. All right. Thanks. Um, let me let me see if I can uh, share my screen. Susan, I, I have the ability to share my screen, don't I? Now you do. <laughs> oh, 
Um, can you see this? Yes. Okay. All right. So um, I, I'm I'm sorry for the confusion, Carolyn. Um, about ninety thousand kilowatt hours on average per month uh, is correct. Uh, if you look at uh, 2019 right here, uh, during the entire year, we used 825,000 kilowatt hours. Now, we have been, you know, we have been uh, working hard to reduce our consumption by moving to right. LED light bulbs and and uh, and so forth as uh, as we move through the facility. So um, we are uh, quite a bit below that. When the 90,000 uh, number came from uh, 12 months of bills that we had collected uh, way at the beginning of this process. So okay. um, if you look at the the numbers on the top line for 2020, you see it's 630,000. Yes. That's because of the pandemic. Um, this area right here, uh, this trough happened in March and April and May. And then in June, that we, our usage went back up when we still when we had people mm -hmm. back in the building. And in July, uh, kind of topped out when we started uh, having patrons back in the building. And then it's moderated, uh, you know, somewhat. Uh, I think that's more of a seasonal change. But you can see that we're a little bit less in uh, 2020 compared to uh, 2020. Right. Oh no, no, I totally understand. Actually, I, I was just when you said 90,000 year, I was kind of excited. But I was looking yeah. at the comment bill, and with 50, 60,000 a month, I knew we were over. But I thought maybe I just wasn't seeing what the numbers really were. No, mm -hmm. I totally understand, and and I and I and I agree with you. All right, thank you, Bill. Okay. Are there other? Uh comments. And Craig, uh, if you wouldn't mind taking that down, just because. Oh, I, certainly. Sorry. I can't, I just can't see all the board members when there's. Of course you uh, can't. Yeah. Is that. Screen sharing. So, we're uh, back. Great. Thank you. Uh, are there other um, questions or comments from any of the remaining board members? All right. Then I, I guess we need a vote then, uh, Cindy. Um, and the motion on the table is to select Dewberry. And what's the cost? Uh, 19900 For solar panels? No, this is our consultant. Oh. This is the engineering okay. aspect. Okay, all right, sorry. Okay. Um, can, I, can I ask one more quick question? Which was the one who uses just a, a two companies? Was that uh, Dewberry? Um, you know, um, Umer, I'm I'm a little hesitant to, to mention only because I don't um, I don't really want to label anybody uh, with any suspicions that I think are unfounded. I okay. think it would be you know I think it would be unfair to them. Fair enough. Okay, can I can I ask a different question? Can you because uh, I remember them you know in terms of the order that they presented? Can you? Uh, can you just give us that as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I believe the first that, one, they? Yeah, Dewberry was the first one. Okay. Um, I think Patrick was the second one. I did have- Circle was last, yeah. And Circle was last, yeah. Okay, okay fair enough. Now, now I remember who, <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure I'm, you know. Right. Um, okay. Umer, did you have another question or was that- No, that was it, that was it. Okay, um, did I hear someone else? No. Okay. All right. Cindy, would you do a roll call? Sure. Um, Linda? Yes. Sorry, can, can we repeat what, what is the motion? Mm -hmm. uh, the motion is to select Dewberry as okay. our solar consultant. Okay. Yes. Karen? So Linda? Yes. Okay. Okay. Karen? Yes. Uh, uh, Carolyn? Uh, no. Becky? Yes. Diane? Yes. Umar? Yes. Patty? Yes. That's everyone. Can okay. I ask a question? Thank you. Yes. So they're the consultant, but did they tell us the cost or what the, the estimate cost for solar is? No. Um, I think, well, they, uh, they, they thought... Us a range. 
they thought it would be okay. less than four dollars per uh, per watt. Okay. And if you built a um, an array uh, that carried uh, ninety thousand uh, kilowatts, um, then you would end up with about three hundred and sixty thousand dollars. And that would be okay. before we uh, we filed for any uh, possible grants or other uh, types of rebates. Okay. Thank you. All right. Good. Uh, we're now down to other. Is there any other uh, matters that we need to talk about? Oh, I... Yeah, Linda has her hand up. Happy birthday to Patty tomorrow. Oh, oh happy birthday, Patty. Patty. Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Hope you have a great day. I have one, uh, which I oh, missed good. Good. earlier. Yes. Um, you, we, I, as I mentioned in my director's report, we're going to have to start reviewing the standards for Illinois libraries. Um, yeah. Becky and Umer may not have this. Uh, the state, if Illinois, state library had run out of them at the time that we first talk, talked about it, but um, most, the rest of you should all have it. You originally did have this one, the green one, standards for Illinois libraries, but about maybe six months ago, you all got a copy of this. So if you have not located where you put that, please take a look for that. And um, we'll start going through. It's it's not even reading chapters anymore. It's more, it's just a little bit of background information, but it's mostly reviewing, oops, the uh, just a list of the things that we should be working toward. And to apply for our per capita grant, we have to be, um, show that we are satisfying these requirements or working toward them. So please take a look for those and we will start working with this next month. And I will make sure that everybody has the pages if you can't locate yours. Thank you. Okay, I, all right, thank you. Uh, Ed, I will let you know ahead of time. And, and as, as always, you can send me a scan okay. version if, uh, if that works. I will do that. All right, so I have one other uh, little matter I'd like to mention and that is uh, I think I mentioned before, we normally do something for the staff on Thanksgiving. We didn't do that. That sort of got away. Hoped to do it for Christmas. That didn't exactly work out. So I'm planning to get a little treat for Valentine's Day. Uh, so um, I will tell you more about that later. Uh, I'm hoping to find something that is uh, not just, not a breakfast because I'm, I'm still concerned about spreading germs that way, but something. So Linda, yes. It's Love Your Library Linda. Month, February. February is Love Your Library oh. Month. Oh, Perfect. good point. All the more reason. All the more reason. Okay, great, great. Okay, so you let unless us know there's any other matters that... I will. Uh, you know, maybe when we get together again, hopefully before too terribly long. Carolyn. You know what? Um, a lot of people... Can you not hear me? Hello? We can, we can hear, hear you. you now. We can hear you. Okay. You know what? A lot of people are um, like, you can go to places and they put things like in a, in a wax bag, like it's sealed. So it's not like food is open and you could still serve something. I mean, maybe you could come up with something like that where you could still give them something, okay. that, you know, but the, they now they wrap it for this COVID protection stuff, you know? All right. Carolyn, that's a good idea. Thank you. Okay, good. Okay. Big Becky? Yeah, there was a cute thing on the on the Facebook, the Niles Facebook page today. Someone does individual boxes of treats. If you're on that page, I don't know, but that was, it was really uh, cute. It had like a chocolate bear in it and a cake pop and different things, and they could be personalized, one box for each person. Uh, hey, Becky, could, could you send me a link or something? Yeah, what sure. you think about that? Could you do that? Great. Okay. Because I don't know how much the expense is, but, uh, you know, I'd like to look at it anyway. Well, Karen, okay. you have to, uh, yes, Karen. Yes, yes. You have to tell us uh, the expenses that you incur. Uh, uh, you know, I, I will, I will. Hopefully, I said, you know, we can, when we get together in person, hopefully later this year, no. uh, you know, we, yeah. you know, maybe can make a little contribution then. Don't worry about it. Okay. All right. Any other matters that we need to discuss this evening? If not, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion. Okay, second. I second. Second. I second. Thank you. Starting your birthday already, Patty. No. <laughs> All right. Not really. Okay. 
Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Please. See if my dog and my bird. <laughs> uh, Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Karen? Karen? I think she's frozen. Okay. Carolyn? Yes. Becky? Yes. Diane? Yes. Okay. And then Karen? Yes. Okay. Okay. I think we better say no. Oh, I'm sorry. For our internet I'm sorry. connection, or my might, I think you missed yes. me. Yeah, it's not doing yes. very well. Bye, Did everyone. Bye. Bye. Oh, okay. All Bye. Right. Bye, everyone. Wait, I forgot to mark. Uh, yes, I'm a yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Sorry. No worries. Have a good night. Good night.